Hi, this is Nancy Yearald, and welcome to Nancy's Psychic View on the High Road to Humanity. And all the way from Spain, Serge Bennington Barons is here. And welcome to the show, Serge. Hi, Nancy. Nice to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. He's written this cool book. It's called Amazing Grace. And this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about his story, how he grew up, and how he became connected with the divine source and consciousness and everything that's going on. But before I even read his bio, you guys, I want to talk about Israel. And here's the headline. This happened about maybe eight minutes ago. I pulled this offline. Israel will let Egypt deliver some aid to Gaza as doctors struggle to treat hospital blast victims. Now, uh, as many of you know, there was a really horrible accident incident yesterday where a hospital was bombed. And I don't believe this was intentional by the Israeli people. I would hope that it's not. Biden is over there um, supporting Netanyahu at this point. He's there right now. This is what uh, it says. Now, this comes from the AP, the Associated Press. Uh, it says, in the Gaza Strip, Israel said Wednesday that it will allow Egypt to deliver limited qu quantities of humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip, the first crackdown in a 10-day siege on the territory. A massive blast at a Gaza City hospital that killed, killed hundreds the day before put immense strain on Gaza doctors treating the wounded as medical supplies have run out. Now, the announcement to allow water, food, and other supplies came as rage over Tuesday night's blast at visited Israel in hopes of preventing a wider conflict in the region. Now, there were conflicting claims of who was responsible for the explosion. Hamas officials in Gaza quickly blamed Israel's airstrikes, saying that nearly 500 were killed. Israel denied it was involved and released a flurry of video, audio, and other information that said showed the blast was instead due to a rocket misfire by an Islamic Jihad, another militant group operating in Gaza. And I'll just say, I don't read this whole thing, but I will say that um, it probably was a misfire. And with all the technology we have today, you guys, you see, it used to be they could say, oh, he did it or oh, she did it. But now we can see we have video. So what do you think about this, Serge? I want to hear your opinion. Oh. War is terrible, and I agree. there's no such thing as morality in war, and civilians die, women get killed, young men die, old men start them, and children get raped, and it's the most terrible thing, and... Um, I believe very much in Gandhi's saying um, that an eye for an eye makes everyone blind. Mm. And the certain things that all wars have in common, and in a way, just as in Russia, there has always been a pattern of having had dictators and people being victims of Stalin or Peter the Great. So there's a big shadow element and Putin has come to play out the victimist, you know, the victim side of, of Russia and to victimize Ukraine. So in a way, I see as Hamas as enacting out the pain and fear 
and sorrow of of the Palestinian people who ever since 1948 have been treated as second-class citizens. And the extraordinary yeah. thing is that Netanyahu in the early days, Nancy, is that he supported Hamas because he thought that as long as Hamas was there, that he could um, avoid a, um, that it would keep the Palestinians quiet. But in fact, exactly the opposite has happened. Well, I'm going to I'm going to interject here a second, Serge, because even though and I'll, and I don't want to get into a whole thing on politics here, but I'm going to interject and tell you that you know whether they have ar they've ar argued over land for years. This is biblical. It's prophecy. It's gone on for so many years. But for I so just many, this, uh, yeah, and I'm interrupting you because I want to say that regardless of. Uh, Netanyahu and Hamas and the Palestinians, you don't kill innocent women and children. Yeah. And, and in my mind, and, and like I said, I don't want to get into the whole thing and I don't want to interrupt you, but it's just that, you know, regardless of your your opinions or your feelings, the women and the kids, the kids that were at the concert that were just killed, the baby. Terrible, that terrible, were terrible, terrible. There's, that's not any way to solve anything. And that's, it's really barbaric. It's not, uh, it's not like these people have, you know, it's not like they're coming together and trying to speak look, to each other. Look, can I just come in and say this? Sure, Nancy? go ahead. <laughs> so that Einstein said no problem gets solved at the level that it exists at. And, yeah. it, and, and this is so with human problems and with political problems. War solves nothing. I agree. But it just... Um, if you try to kill off what you think is evil, you become the very evil that you're trying to kill. And okay. so evil spreads and disaster spreads. And what is needed, and it needs a lot of consciousness and there's people all around the world praying for it. In the hour before I spoke to you, I spent in prayer. What is needed is the spirit of forgiveness. Yes. Everyone needs to be forgiven. I agree with you. I think the hospital was not bombed on purpose. No, I don't think so. And it could well have been Hamas or Hezbollah who, who bombed it just to create more friction. But as we saw in the war in Iraq, it did nothing to stem terrorism. In fact, it, the Iraq war just brought more terrorists out of the woodwork. Yeah. And so somehow the world is in a, in a very crucial state at this moment. And in terms of my book, a fierce grace is going on. Um, I just gave a lecture at a conference and I talked about the world situation and I described it as fierce grace because there is um, in disaster and catastrophe, there's always a sort of learning. And to put a positive slant, I think that we're entering new times and that newness casts its shadow in front of it. So we are being confronted, the human race, with everything that is most barbaric and horrendous and despicable about humanity as a collective. Because as Thich Nhat Hanh said, war is not just with the soldiers, war is inside all of us. So that this is our human problem. It's not just the problem of the Israelis and the Arabs. Yeah, and That's I think, yeah, I mean. and I'm, let me interject. Yeah. I, passion I, and heart and love and a completely new space that we need to get into. And I believe that if enough prayer groups in the world can get busy, that something can change in the consciousness. And that's me being very um, ambitious. But I am ambitious because I feel, Nancy, in my last chapter in my book, 
Um, excuse me going on, but I'm very passionate about this. That's my okay. last chapter in my book says that we're going to make it and we're going to create a better society, but we're going to go through some suffering and some difficulties en route. And we're certainly going through those difficulties at this moment. Yes, I agree. Um, here's how I feel about this, and I'll try not to be lengthy. I, as you believe that it's each person waking up and getting on a different level where we are about love and not about hate. And you're correct. Fear does crazy things to people. And if we can just uh, raise our consciousness to where we realize that it's about love and not about fear. And yes, I think we're going to get there too. I really think we're going to get there too. But I, yes, but I believe that there is going to be some divine intervention. I think um, you don't want to get me started on this, but I'll kind of give you a quick synopsis. Serge, I think that we don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes. I think there's way more going on behind the scenes than what we are being told. I think there is different motivation than what we are being told. But what we can do, and while I do this show, is to help uplift people so they're connected with the divine. And when the craziness goes on, we're okay. We still stay in our light. We still stay in our kindness. Absolutely. Yes. And so we watch it go on. And, you know, it's sad because in one way, Israel wants to defend itself. But on the other hand, these people want what's theirs and they feel that they have been done wrong. So until people raise their consciousness, like we're talking about today with Amazing Grace, and they get to a point, just like you, you started out, let's talk about you. You started out as a young boy. I want to, I want you to tell the audience your story. Me, you were, little old me. Okay, I'll talk about little talk old about me. Talk about you. It you is were in far less important than <laughs> what's happening in the planet, but I will talk about little well, old me. A bit. That's okay, why, well, hold so, on. That's, hold so, on. That's why I do this show, to help the whole planet. But you came from an entitled family. You grew yeah. up. Yes, talk about this because you had to get, and the reason I bring this up is because these people are not as evolved as you are. The people in Palestine are not as involved, evolved as I am, meaning that we're not any better. We're just at a different stage of consciousness. So when you started, tell us your story. What happened? Okay, Nancy. Okay. Um, my mum was a Russian princess. She was part of the royal family and her grandparents escaped at the revolution. And then she met my father, who was a wealthy tycoon, um, Jewish, um, I mean, and he'd inherited his wealth. Yeah. And so I grew up with about 18 servants for my two parents and me. And, yeah. and my early life was privileged and rich with houses everywhere and um and servants and i was sent to the best schools and and um oxford university i know and you even got and, in and you weren't even they you didn't even pass the test your dad just had money so they just let you in yeah absolutely yeah so 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 i grew up in this privileged world where where I was in I felt entitled, I was snobbish, I was racist, I was homophobic, I felt superior to everyone else. But Nancy, I felt I was like a pea in the wrong pod or a member of the wrong tribe. This this um entitled world i felt miserable in it it had no soul so as soon as my father died when i was 23 i'd left oxford spirituality my soul that was dying inside me all those years um i realized that i was on a spiritual path and that the purpose of life was not to make money and to have outer abundance, I had all that. I gave a lot of it away. I helped a lot of causes. I wanted to be an ordinary person. I wanted to live simply. And so my journey took me through many spiritual teachers, through going to California 
in the late 70s when I was part of the human potential movement and studied with some of the great teachers of that time, Joseph Campbell um, and um, Roberto Asigioli and the great transpersonal you know, psychotherapist. Right. And then I realized that I needed to heal myself, but in healing myself, I realized that happiness comes from actually healing and helping other people. So basically, in my fuddly, crazy, eccentric way, because, you know, I think I'm, you know, I'm quite an eccentric person. My <laughs> wife just made me have my hair cut. It was terribly long before, and she <laughs> said, you know, at your age, you can't have that long hair, sir, you know, sort of, you know, be a little respectful. But I said, Darling, I don't want to be a respectful. You want to be who you are. <laughs> I grew up trying to be respectable and trying to. Well, so sir, anyway, hold, um, hold on a minute. So, hold on. Hold on. I want to rewind yeah. a little bit. I want to go back. I'm a Scottish girl. So I want to go back to Scotland. I want to go back to the part in your book. And you guys, it's a really interesting book. And he tells his story. And I'm we're skipping a lot of parts. And so I'm going to go back a little bit. Yeah. I want to hear about Finehorn. You said, and this is, he goes to Finehorn and he says, it's about being in the physical presence or atmosphere of people who already are the change, who are further along than you as they carry you along in their slipstream. You met Peter and Eileen Caddy. They really changed, that whole situation really changed you. And that's why I want you to talk about it. It was wonderful. I went to Fintorn. It was then a small caravan site. There was a man called David Spangler, who was its philosopher, and Peter and Eileen, who subsequently became lifelong friends. Yeah. And there was a wonderful consciousness there. And I suddenly, I found my tribe. And because everything, um, I learned that if things were done with love, that everything changes and they produce these enormous vegetables like this and I said but how could you do it in this tiny little you know sandy not very fertile song and they said it's because it's done with love and then I met the guy who who um ran the printing machine and he said I have a good connection a loving connection with this printing machine and i can make it print at double the speed and if you try to do it serge um it would break down at once because you don't love machines you don't have this connection with the printing machine so basically it was really an epiphany being at findhorn and i absolutely believe and this i've always tried that, you know, just as in tennis, I'm a tennis player. If you play with people better than you, it lifts your game. Right. If you if you hang out with people who are more awake, more evolved, more full of heart than you, it does something to you in exactly the same way that if you hang out with people who are kind of low life -y, Yeah, they bring you down. It kind of brings you down. Yeah. It brings you down so that I've always tried in my life, in as I was learning, to um, to hang out with wise people so that a little bit of their um, aura would come into me. And now I'm at a stage that I need to help a lot of people who are in a lot of pain and suffering and who whose consciousness is not too awake. And so I try to do that. And by the way, I just want to say quickly yes. that anyone listening to this, if you're in pain and you need help, email me a free session. I'd be happy to spend an hour with you. And your email, it's not sir? me being nice. It's me being of service because it does me more good I feel that we all need to be of service in the world and to help each other and to be kind to each other and to do things. So um, my um, my web my email address is info 
S-E-R-G-E-B-B at gmail.com. Or you can just Google Serge Beddington Behrens. You get hundreds of things about me and you'll very get kind. onto my website. It's very kind of you to do that. So I'd be happy because, um, yeah. That's kind of you to do that. I want to go back a little bit. So when you were in um, Scotland, is that when you really connected with, I say God, you can say divine source. I think you call it supreme being. Um, is that when you first connected? I had an experience. I was a ski racer. Okay. And I was doing an international competition in the downhill where you go at about 70, 80 miles an hour. And if you've ever watched it, you notice there's big jumps. Yeah. Well, I was 19 years old. And in those days, in the 60s, they didn't have the protection around the edges that, um, you know, it was all a bit hokey in those days. Now, yeah. now in the ski races, I mean, if you go off piste, you know, you you sort of go into a barrier and you're not hurt. And there were no barriers around and it was an international race and i saw i was going to hit some rocks because i'd approached from the side instead of directly on and yeah. suddenly in the air i suddenly felt that i slowed down and an angelic presence was with me it slowly turned me round i felt a kind of jelly-like beauty and I heard music and it was all in slow motion and I just felt a presence that said it ain't your time Serge and I was put down on the piece perfectly and the rest of the race was done in slow motion I had all the time I was going at 70 80 miles an hour but it was in slow motion so I had all the time to do the turns now I was an Englishman competing against top people you know French and Swiss and yeah. who are the great skiers yeah um, so I mean you know I was Mr Amateur <laughs> you know, and they just let me in this race, you know, to be kind. We'll just let this poor token old we'll English. Just let him in, yeah. And I did this fantastic time that I was that I was less than a second slower than the person who ran the race, who was a professional racer. So that was an experience of a higher consciousness coming to encounter me because I stayed in that space for about two weeks after. Wow. And so it was, and so I've had visitations throughout my life of grace, where I felt a helping presence has been with me. Um, and that if I've been about to do something stupid, you know, it hasn't happened. You know, I'm about to, to sort of, do that terrible investment, but I lose the phone number of the person who, oh, okay. who sort of tried to cheat me. Okay. <laughs> so you I had, lose the had thing. divine intervention is what you've you had. know. So 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 at one level, Nancy, that you could call it luck, but I've always felt that a presence has guided me and supported me. And um and even in difficult times has given me the strength to be able to go through sort of difficulties because, you know, we all go through periods of suffering in our life. Right. Well, and I believe we pick our parents and you talk about that a little bit in the book, you know, where you, you believe you picked your parents because if you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be where you are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm so grateful for my life. Yeah. And because I'm grateful, it makes me want to support and help and help other people. Mm -hmm. so, That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I feel that way too. I'm grateful. Yeah, Nancy, I can see that. I yeah. feel that with you. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you 
Yeah. And that's why I wanted to talk about the connection because, um, you know, we all go through things in life and, you know, whatever religion you are, whatever nationality you are, there's that higher power. There's that yeah. love energy. And it's really, and I teach the audience all the time. It's really my goal to get everybody to connect. If I could just get everybody to plug into that love energy, that, that creative energy, that God energy that's there for us. And it's free and it doesn't cost anything. And it changes you and it makes you more vibrant and joyful. And it fills it you up. It costs a lot to not connect into it. Correct. There you go. My first book I wrote, Nancy, I don't know if I'm, no, I can't find it, was called Awakening the Universal Heart. Oh, yes, it's here. A oh, guy, a spiritual yeah. activist. So okay. I wrote this book about 10 years ago. It's all about awakening the heart. Okay, now hold up. You're going to laugh because I got to get mine because we're on, even though we're on, I wrote this in 2016. <laughs> wake up. We're on the same page, you and I. <laughs> and wake I just, up. yeah, wake up because I just relaunched mine um, yesterday. Yesterday, I'm writing a new one, but but it's the same concept, you know, it's the do same. You know, do you know, I'm thinking of relaunching my book because yes. it's never been more relevant. Right, that's what I read. Exactly. Man, we are on the same page, you and I, Serge. I am writing yeah. a new book right now about angels and about spiritual law, but there are so many principles in this book that I wanted people to read and to understand. And um, yeah, exactly. You should do a relaunch. Absolutely. Because you know, this, people are searching. I mean, it's really funny. I sort of looked at it. I hadn't looked at it for years. And I thought, wow, I really like some of those things. Yes. Said, wow, I didn't know that. God, I mean, I've really learned about it. Oh, shall I do that exercise to open my heart? Cool. Wow. Yeah, great. Yeah, I wonder who wrote that oh i did i did <laughs> it's and real. actually at this moment i am preparing a big lecture on re-envisioning war and i saw i had a chapter in this book about bringing love into war and how to deal with evil and war so it's like it's time it's time yeah it's time is now. And so I'm, well, great. <laughs> yes, yes, I think you should, because, you know, and that's really what it's all about, you know, and that's what you talk about in this book is expanding your own consciousness and telling your own story. And I interrupted you when you said you moved to California. So I want you to continue on and tell more of your story. You did go to California and you became a U.S. citizen. I became a U.S. citizen because... Yeah. Um, I tell you, um, I tell you, I'm a good bullshitter, <laughs> and um, I managed to convince the Americans that I could do something that no American could do. I Which can't is how I did it, but but sort of one of the things I learned, um, you know, from my past was to use a little bit of charm. <laughs> So I somehow um, sort of managed to get the right people and, you know, and they gave me a green card. Oh, my God. So, um, so, so um, yeah, it was wonderful being in California at that time because um, the new age was beginning. It was called the new age then. The the dawning of the age of Aquarius. That's right. And now here we are in the age of Aquarius. Oh my God. Now, you know, and the human potential movement was happening, and all the visionaries from all over the world were coming to California to develop their their thesis because there was a freedom there. And and so I not only got to meet some of my spiritual heroes, but even to work alongside them. And it was such an honor, you know, in terms of being around wise people. Well, who was and, there? Serge, who was there with you? Well, sort of who was there was sort of Joseph Campbell, um, Francis Vaughan, Barbara Marks Hubbard, who, who later campaigned to be... Um, 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 before Hillary Clinton um, 
president of the United of the United States. And with her and some others, we started an institute in San Francisco called the Institute for the Study of Conscious Evolution. And we taught a lot of degree courses and, and everything. And it was and it was a great honor to have gone there. It was the most creative time of my life. And I'm finding that the ideas I developed there, there, Nancy, and, um, are now taking root in, in today's world. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. That's so that you guys talked about consciousness and the expansion of consciousness way back then. Yeah. Yeah. What really, um, so why did you, you ended up going back to England or how did you end up in Spain? I'll tell you, I felt sort of Joseph Campbell, he, he talks about the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And the hero goes to the top of the mountain, and then he takes his vision down into the valley. He doesn't stay on top of the mountain. I felt that I needed to go back to England, to the stuffy, old, you know, class-ridden, you know, upper class, middle class, lower class world. And it still exists. Right. Because I needed to take what I'd learned on the top of the mountain in California. I needed to take it back to England. So I came back to England and suddenly realized, God, I've been away for um, 12 years. Nobody knows me. How am I going to do anything? You know, how am I going to get my work started? You know, mm -hmm. I've lived out of the country. Yeah. And one person organized a workshop for me at the College of Psychic Studies. I turned up. And there were 30 people enrolled for this workshop. And eight of them became my clients. Two of them worked for me and organized my courses. And in the space of six months, I was so busy because I had a place in the country that I had to rent um, a flat in London in order to see all my clients. And I felt that this is amazing grace, you know, that the force is with me. Yes. But the key thing is, as in Star Wars, you've got to be aligned to the force for the force to be with you. That's right. And if you're not aligned, the force may be with you, but it's another kind of force. That's you know, right. it's the force that um, that um, amplifies the Hamas leaders, mm -hmm. because there's all sorts of different forces. But I would call the force the good force or the helping force. So it was great. I arrived back in England and suddenly my, you know, my work took off. Because it was supposed to. I love it. I want to read <laughs> something from your book, if it's okay with you. you. Guys, this is on page 243. And this really, this really hit me. So I just want you guys sit back and relax a minute. This is what he says. He says, I believe that the reason why we were created, why we have all come into incarnation is because as we choose to embark- Could you speak a bit louder? Sorry, I can't- Okay, I believe that the reason why we were created, why we have all come into incarnation is because as we choose to embark on the journey of becoming more who we truly are, we increasingly become a space for a higher or a more divine consciousness to know itself and to celebrate itself through us. In a word, we became we become a space for grace. So when you and I are feeling joy, when we love someone or something, say our work or a beautiful piece of art or music, or when we are acting courageously or experiencing a deep connection with nature, we become a space for this consciousness, which ordinarily is hidden inside each of us to come more and more out of hiding and manifest itself. Hey, who wrote that? It cool that stuff. was good, sirs. That was cool really stuff, good. Nancy. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'll tell you what, like you, I've interviewed, gosh, you know, Serge, I've done over 400 and some shows now. Yeah. And I've interviewed so many fabulous people. And just like you were Great. talking about, 
like you learn from all these different people. And that's how I feel. The audience and I learn from all of you who come on the show. And that is just profound because we all have to go within, right? And we all have to find ourselves and we all have to heal ourselves. You want to talk a little bit about that before we get out of here today about healing ourselves? Well, I just want to say that sort of most of us grow up to be taught to go out to work. And I say that we also need to learn to go into work. And um, we need to work on ourselves. I wrote another book called um, Gateways to the Soul, and that's about how to work on ourselves. And um, well, the question you asked me was, was how we work on ourselves. Um, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, now. because here's what I feel. And I just want to get your opinion, Serge, because you're really sharp. So I feel all the people that I've spoken with and everything that I've learned, I feel that each of us has to go inside and work on ourselves. Yeah. And that is the key to raising the consciousness as a collective, because if each of us just work on each ourselves, it would be huge. What do you feel? Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 we also have to go inside. And as Jung said, if you want to become enlightened, don't sit on the mountaintop, but go into your shadow. And we need to go into our dark side and we need to work with those parts of us that 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 are selfish and manipulative and vengeful and don't forgive and we need to bring these parts into consciousness not make ourselves wrong say oh Serge you're such a bad person for being selfish but sort of because then we just stay selfish and we punish ourselves for being bad but instead to to sort of look okay now I see I'm selfish how can I become less selfish and again a wonderful way to to do this work is to be in relationship with someone that we have harmony with because um, our, our dark side comes up so much in relationships with those that we're close to. Right. I think so, it's a mirror. We're mirroring that. We mirror. We mirror our, yeah. yeah, we really do. We really do. I've had a lot of time by myself, which is good because it's given me a chance. And I think this is good for everybody to have that connection with the divine source. And, you know, when you do connect and I bet you meditate, don't you? Yeah. And then you get messages. I always tell everybody, you know, when you connect, you get messages and it helps you progress. Yeah. 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 Serge, this is amazing. What has been the, uh, how long has it been out? It just came out, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it just came out. I'll just tell you quickly one reason why, no, just two reasons why I wrote it. One, okay. because I'm always listening to other people's stories and, and I felt I wanted to tell my story. Yeah. And secondly, a lot of the people I work with think I'm this sort of marvellous person who's so good and wise and, you know, all that stuff. And... You, you know, and then sometimes say, oh, Serge, huh? And I kind of wanted to let them know that I was a selfish, manipulative bastard, you know, entitled and a shit and selfish and as manipulative as anyone. But I, but, but I had to suffer that and to see that and to work through that. And if I'm a little less manipulative nowadays, um today it's because i've worked on it so 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 my other books have been how to work on yourself this book is about how i've worked on myself and the things that have been important to me so so it's a teaching book in a way but it's also fun because it's my you know because it's my story um yeah. And you've had a colorful, you've had a very colorful life. Do you want a funny story? Okay. Quickly. quickly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
yeah, my father said, sir, you need to be a tough guy. You know, I'm going to take you camping, do things that real men do. So sort of, here was the adventure. The chauffeur drove us into the field <laughs> a little bit near our house. I'm uh, sorry, the chauffeur. Um, the chauffeur drove you. Yeah, the chauffeur drove us in the Rolls Royce. I was about seven. Um, <laughs> okay. um, the farm manager erected the tent. Um, the maid came and made the beds. The cook came and cooked um, and sort of cooked our sort of dinner, you know, over the camp fire. The butler served us. You know, there was just my father and me, you know, and in the morning, the butler came with my father's papers that he sort of neatly ironed. And so they were all fresh and still a little bit warm. And then the cook came to give us um, our breakfast. And then the groom came, Nancy, to, to take my father and me for a ride. So um, I, I said after that, that's why I've grown up to be such a manly person and so great at knocking nails into a wall, because I'm afraid, you know, that certain things you never learn, <laughs> you never do learn. That's a lovely story. I'm so glad you shared it with so me. So anyway, um, you know, so that, so I've never been a tough guy, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, but you're a very smart man. And you know what? This is a really cool book. And you guys got to check it out. I want to mention through the book, oh, when you get to, I'm looking for pictures because when you get to a certain point, there we go. There's pictures. I love it. And there's a picture of you when you're a little boy. I love this one. And you're on a pillow, like a little prince. Yes, and, and <laughs> the little half prince. You are the half, you call it the half princeling of, on his yeah, If you want to laugh, is the one that I didn't put in oh. because, because I thought it would be too sort oh, of narcissistic. Look, at you. look how um, handsome. <laughs> so, sort of, that's the, so, so that's the picture I didn't put in. <laughs> <laughs> I because I it. thought, you know, everyone will think that he's such a narcissist. I love it. That's so awesome. Well, you're an <laughs> athlete and you can tell in that picture how buff you were. You were pretty buff, man. They probably thought saw you coming in California, huh? What? Did you ever yeah. surf or anything when you were in California? Did you ever do any of that? Um, um, no, but no? I've always been a sportsman. I've always, you know, kept fit. Yeah, you are. You're a fit guy. Well, listen, I'm just really thrilled that you came on the show today. And this book is called Amazing Grace. It's memoirs of a transformational. Day. I am now writing um, another book of essays sort of sort of ranging from, um, you know, sort of dealing with war to sort of, um, you know, connection with the psychedelic realities and you know do do um space beings and angels exist okay. so um, so so it's just going to be a series of sort of essays I but i want to say again to you that if you'd like to have a chat with me for an hour please be in touch no charge um would be happy to support and help you search so that's amazing and thank and, you and um my and my website is www.sergebeddingtonbarons. It's all one word, Serge, S-E-R-G-E-B-E-D-D-I-N-G-T-O-N-B-E-H-R-E-N-S dot -E 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 com. Okay, and I'm holding the book up if you guys are watching this on YouTube. I'm just thrilled you came. I hope you'll come back with your next book and see me again. Nancy, you're a great lady. You do great work. It's been a real honor to, to rock and roll with you. And I've oh, enjoyed gosh, it. Yeah. <laughs> because I think conversations need to be fun. You yes, know? they do. You're right. You're absolutely right. And I've had right. fun with you. So yes. thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I had fun and, with you too. And um, I just want to say to people, put in some prayer that um, that healing comes about between um, the Palestinians and um, Israelis and sort of and open your and open your heart to the suffering 
of those people and realize you may complain because your rent has gone up or that the price of of chips is now a couple of dollars more but how lucky we are yeah all of us we've got a roof over our head right you know and, right and we've got enough food to eat you know we're mm -hmm. terribly lucky mm -hmm. you know no, okay. it's true. No, you're absolutely true. We need to be grateful for what we have, for our health yeah. and for, you know, just being able, you and I, just being able to connect today and share this information with the world. You guys, it's called Amazing Grace. You're going to have to pick it up. All right. Now I'm going to tell you guys something exciting. I'm going to be in LA. I'm going to be in California and I'll be there for the Conscious Life Expo. And that's going to be in February uh, February 11th, you guys, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do a workshop and I'm going to teach everybody spiritual law and how to connect with their angels. So it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous expo. I hope you'll come and see me, Serge. I'll be there. It's going we to be want to go night. on Nancy's workshop because she's a lovely person and you're going to learn a lot and we need to con connect with our angels that's right and i'm going to connect with everybody out there everybody's going to get their wings so i'm really looking forward to it so i want to promote that today i did just relaunch my book you guys wake up it has a different cover but the same name you can pick it up on amazon or at barnes and noble remember amazing grace i'm going to get out of here for today i hope everybody has a fabulous day and god bless Let's hit the